MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Once again, thank you so much for your time, uh, Sayyid Jalal, mesmerizing voice as always, which brings us very nicely onto our next part of the show, where we move from Quran to supplications and du'as and ziyaras, uh, upon which we kind of shed some light on some of the ziyaras or the du'as or the supplications that perhaps we don't know much about. And if we do know much about, some new key points that we would love to learn and to benefit for the viewers. Um, Zara, join me in welcoming uh, our guest as always, um, Ibrahim Ansari. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. We're doing fine, we're doing <coughs> fine. And um, the reason why I, I moved it on to um, Ibrahim is because um, he wants, off air, he told us that he wants to <laughs> say, say salam first because he feels like that when we do the salam first, we get most of the thawab. So he wants to do salam this time. Um, and so he did. So the thawab is all yours, um, Ibrahim. But still give you one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, we, we, we'll, we'll take that one. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Brilliant. How are you? Alhamdulillah. How about yourself? Good, yeah, thank you. Families all doing well, inshallah. All good, alhamdulillah. 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 Um, so we've been speaking a lot about uh, different types of ziyaras and some of them are famous, some of them are not, yeah. not so famous. Um, uh, and today we're focusing on Dua al-Sabah. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's one that I take a keen interest in. Yeah. Um, but I'd love to find out more from your side in terms of maybe the reason why you've chosen this dua. And and let's because mm. the dua is quite long, so I'm I'm very interested to know which part you've chosen, yeah, and perhaps why. Um, so first of all, the part that I chose is actually uh, the last part, mm. uh, the, which is the sujood part of the dua, mm. um, just just to end it with it, inshallah. But other than that, we, the dua itself, I chose the dua itself because yes, it is long, but not as long as other duas. Mm. And the words are so meaningful. The words of Amir al muminin are unbelievable. Honestly unbelievable. Mm. The way he portrays things, the way he, um, he links the dua to the Qur'an, the way he links dua to Tawheed, the way he links dua to Aqeedah, is all just unbelievable. And it is impossible that such words can come from anyone mm. but a ma'asum. Yeah. And not only just a ma'asum, it's impossible for such words to come from anyone but Amir al muminin He has such amazing eloquence in the way he speaks, in the way he portrays things. And Dua al-Sabah itself is actually a dua that um, <coughs> I have made a connection with. Mm. So I remember from when I was very young, which is when my dad used to take me to school, mm -hmm. is that whenever we're in the car, he would make me get out the dua on my phone and he would force me to read it. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, at that time, mm -hmm. having just learned how to read Arabic, etc., this dua is not just reading Arabic. Yeah. This dua is reading some different kinds of, kinds of Arabic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's so hard to recite, especially getting the harakat yes, right. Yes. And the harakat, the thing with this dua, literally change one harakat, you've changed the whole meaning of the whole dua. Not yeah. just, just the word, mm -hmm. yeah. you've changed the whole meaning of the dua. So it's very difficult. But what, what it then caused was it caused for my Arabic to strengthen. Mm -hmm. uh, it caused uh, for me to cause to have the the um, the bond with the dua. Mm -hmm. uh, I even memorized the dua at one mm -hmm. point. Um, now I can After forget. While, yeah. And uh, yeah. as you know, when when, when you're <laughs> little, you, you you've got that yeah. that whole thing where you start to memorize the Quran, the dua, and then and slowly then you forget just all of them, yeah. 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 It's still it's still there. Alhamdulillah. Um, but once again. When I then was explained some of the words, I was amazed. Mm. So for example, Amir al muminin he starts, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Allah ma sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad, Ya man dala alisana al-sabahi binutqi taballuji. Now I look at the sentence and I'm like, I need 10 Arabic teachers to come explain what yeah. this sentence means. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the words used are not even the words, I'm not going to say the daily used words, yeah. no, they're not even the words used in Arabic textbooks. Wow. Literally. And I'm standing there, I'm like, Ya man dala alisa. No, okay, so now I know that he's talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya man yeah. has to be towards Allah because he's making dua towards Allah subhanahu wa yeah. ta'ala. And then the rest I'm stuck. Yeah. Then he say, dala a means to take out. Like, where's Dala'a, where's to take out? Lisan mm. al-Sabah. The lisan of lisan al-Sabah, the tongue of the morning, yeah. he means the shuruq of the sun. Wow. The metaphors used yeah. are unbelievable. Binutqi yeah, taballuji. Yeah. Nutq means to speak. Yeah. And it's as if he's saying, oh, the one who has 
uh, taken out the brightness of the day and it's as if it is so bright that it is speaking. Mm. And, wow. and I just that stood there. And I just That's just the first line. That's just the, the first way. line. We haven't even gotten to the dua yet. وَسَرَّحَ قِطَعَ الْلَيْلِ بِغَيَاهِ بِي يَعْمَلْ دَلْعَ لِسَانَ الصَّبَاحِ بِنُطْقِ تَبَلُّجِهِ وَسَرَّحَ قِطَعَ الْلَيْلِ بِغَيَاهِ بِي تَلَجْلُجِهِ وَأَتْقَنَ صُنْعَ الْفَلَكِ الدَّوَارِ What is going on? It's not on? the normal language that you find in du'as or ziyaras or mm. even supplications. It's really, really not. So what's yeah. your sort of, um, how do you feel? When I, I, I kind of got introduced, uh, basically I, there was one morning I thought, I bought new headphones. Mm. I was like, okay, yeah. I want to make use of this. Um, and I have a commute of about half an hour. Mm -hmm. So I thought, I, I want to kind of use, I usually recite, um, a du'a al-hitijab again yeah. by Amir al-Mu'mineen yeah. um, which is a phenomenal du'a in itself yeah. um, so I thought I want to I want to change it up and I always knew about du'a al-sabah mm. and there was one time I was uh, this is going to be, be quite honest there was one time I was in a ziyara group and we were leaving towards Samar Ra yeah. and I wasn't very well acquainted with du'a al-sabah and as you mentioned it is really difficult to recite yeah. especially first time if you haven't prepared for it yeah. so then I was sitting in front in, in the front rows um, and the mic got thrust towards me and then the guy next to me said to me, Dua Sabah. Oh wow. I'm like, oh, okay, fine. So I tried and, and I, it was all over the place. And I really felt ashamed because I know yeah. this was is it a, were the speakers Arabic, the were they the group? No no no, it was a, it was a, it was a, like an English Ziara group. Um, so they wouldn't have known. They wouldn't have known, but I was just like, uh, 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 yeah. uh, I was just, uh, I just, I kept on. Throws you, doesn't it? Yeah, it yeah. did, it did. Yeah. So I, I really felt ashamed because I thought it's one of the major du'as yeah. and yeah. Imam, it's Imam one. Ali's du'a and everything. So I thought, then when I came back and I was like, actually, you know what? I mm. want to I wanna really start to memorize properly du'a sabah to find yeah. out what the true meaning is. And the first time I heard it, and this is yeah, totally, totally honest, I was on the train and then it just hit because the sun was Aww. slightly yeah. shining. Uh, the sun was just about coming out. And the words were very relevant to the morning. Yeah. Um, mm. And literally relevant to the morning in the sense that, you know, start my day with blessing. It just says, you know, start my day in servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in serving, in, 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 in just having that connection with yeah. God to, to, to know that the rest of your day is, is, is going to be blessed. Yeah. And coincidentally, or subhanAllah, or whichever yeah. way you want to think it, actually that day was one of the best days that I had in, in terms of work and, and just productivity, because yeah. it just, it felt like everything was um, just a bit more pure mm. than, than, than normal, right? Uh, and that's that's my kind mm. of like, and that's why every, every every single day since then, like I just, it's just now part and parcel of the daily routine, and then just that's carry on my normal day. Yeah. It's really, really nice. It's, that's it's, lovely. I very much mm. recommend it to the, to, yeah, no, definitely. to the viewers. And in fact, um, for some reason, just, just like uh, Ali mentioned, he created a, a direct bond with it. And that is the case for every single person he listens to it for the yeah. first time. Yeah. So what, what is it about this? So for example, there's, sometimes they do these um, YouTube videos of where they give someone uh, a Christian or a non-believer non -believer earphones and they play, for example, a song and then they pray, play the Quran. And then they're amazed by what they hear. Mm. And it's so as if Dua al Sabah is something very similar to this, where every single person that listens to True. it, even when not understanding the words, True. because I'll tell you this for sure, no matter how Arab you are, yeah. you're not going to understand this Dua. Understand, yeah. Even though they do not understand the words, you build a direct connection yes, with true. it. Yeah, there's and something it's unbelievable. Because yeah. I'll be honest with you, I used to recite this every morning, a few, good few years ago. Um, and again, like you, it just brings that blessing. And I don't, I mean, I'd listen to the Arabic, someone else reciting, and then I would, on the recording, and then I would read the translation. Mm. Um, but even in that capacity, it's so beautiful. So imagine, yeah. you know, when you're blessed to be able to recite it in Arabic. Yeah. Definitely. Really, but, yeah. in, in other parts of the dua, it talks about how... Um, I left my need all within you. Bika mm. anzal mm. hajati. So he says. He says. Uh, and and the thing is with with when when Amir al Mu'minin says bika anzal hajati, he is saying when he is saying a haja, it means that you are lacking something, because you do not have a need unless you are lacking something. Yeah. So whenever I ask Allah subhanahu wa taala, it's because I know that He does not lack anything. I lack something. Specific, whatever it may be, and that is my haja, that is my need. Mm. 
This wow. is towards the very end of the that is of, unbelievable. Of, of the dua. Yeah. Do you not La Tarudani um deny me? Deny me min sani mawahibika. And here any Arab person that reads it, mm. Mohibe translates to what? A a uh, so if I if if I'm good at something Oh a talent. A talent. Mm. Do not deny me f uh, from your talents. And and then it's, it's like it doesn't make sense. What is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gonna use his talents mm. to accept your dua? Then when you look at the actual word, it is hibbe. It comes from the word hebbe. Uh, and then then it carries on towards hibbe. Hibbe means what? A gift. Uh. Mm. So do not deny me from your gifts. Mm. And then khaiba means uh, from the word of uh, that khaybat amal, when you have khaybat amal, which is when you um, lose hope. You lose hope. So mm. do not deny me from your gift that will then end up making me lose hope. Mm. Oh. Look how beautifully he has put this. That is, by the way, Zara, I'm, I'm telling you, the mm. Arabic is, is, is out of this world. Mm. It really is something unbelievable. And you're absolutely yeah. right. Like No other person in this world can, can put together words so perfectly yeah. calculated. Not even it's not just a random yeah. oh Allah help me or oh Allah you know my need. No, this, these are carefully selected words yeah. um, to have such a deep, deep meaning. Uh, the precision. I, I just speak the language of Ahl Bayt when you look at the du'as and you know even when you sort of like I mean you get the gist of Arabic, but it's it's just so precise, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And, then, yeah. and again, like you said, the eloquence that they yeah. have that they don't need to say a lot. Like perhaps when we're describing something or trying to explain, we use a lot of language skills, but they just say it bang. It's, it's Honestly, so yeah. amazing. And what, what Amir al Mumin says in one sentence requires exactly. books yeah. to to translate what yeah. he's yeah. what he's yeah. trying to show. Just and the thing, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, as I was saying, just just in the, for the benefit of the time, yeah. you have selected. Um, a certain yeah, I've selected part. the last should part. We focus, of it. Should we focus on that in terms of the meaning and sure. and, and and stuff? Yeah. yeah. So the the last part, another beauty about this du'a is that it ends with a sujood. Mm. It ends with prostration towards Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and in the sujood, uh, I'll recite it and then we can we yeah. can talk about it, inshallah. He says. <coughs> Ilahi qalbihi mahjub wa nafsi ma'yub wa aqlihi maghloob wa hawai ghalib wa ta'ati qalil wa ma'asiyati kathir wa lisaani muqirrum bidhnub فكيف حيلت يا ستار العيوب ويا علام الغيوب ويا كاشف الكروب اغفر ذنوبي كلها بحرمة محمد وآل محمد يا غفار يا غفار يا غفار برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Thank you The dua to end in this specific way mm. is unbelievable The way he starts and the way he ends it He's telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Oh Allah there's a veil on top of my heart mm. That is causing us to sin Oh Allah ta'ati mm. qaleel my obedience towards my obedience towards you is little. Mm. And I am sinning a lot. Mm. And and my tongue is 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 has constant is, is constantly singing. And muqirrun bidhnub. The word muqir is like it's constantly going and, and it is as if it has put a stamp mm. on there that it will do nothing but sin. Muqirrun bidhnub. فكيف حيلتي يا ستار العيوب What is my hila? What, what can I do? Mm. Oh, the one who covers defects. defects. And the thing is, so I sin at home. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has covered over my sins that when I am sitting here on the sofa, both of you are not aware of what I am sinning. Mm. The viewers do not know of what sins I have done 
Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala covers over them. So everything that I just mentioned, that aqli maghloob wa hawa'i ghalib, and there's a veil on my heart, and that I'm constantly sinning, and that I'm being disobedient towards you, out of your mercy, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what are you doing? You're covering it from the eyes of other people. Part of his mercy. Yeah. And the one who knows of the unseen, وَكَاشِفَ الْكُرُوبِ Then he says, اغفر ذنوبي كلها. Look, look at where we have brought ourselves down. And this is a lesson, by the way. This is a lesson from Amir al-Mu'mneen. That when you want to ask for forgiveness, take yourself down. Take yourself down all the way to the ground. Mm. Oh Allah, I am the one who sinned. And this is my sin. Forgive me, oh Allah. And... Another infallible that I love his du'as is Imam Zainul Abideen. Mm -hmm. And in the du'a of Abi Hamza Thamali, mm. he says, And after all my sinning, I dare to come and ask you for forgiveness. Mm. SubhanAllah. And those are two infallibles, to be honest with you, that whenever I read any of the du'as mentioned by them, Amir al Mu'mineen, be it this du'a or any other du'a that he has written, and likewise with Imam Zainul Abideen, there's always something special about them. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I'm very much. In, I was so engrossed within the conversation. I actually didn't take any notes oh, um, wow. to recap. Um, but I think that that is a perfect end yeah. to, to to this part of the show. Thank you so much once again. God bless you. Uh, Beautiful. For that. Thank you. Um, and on that note, um, we are going to be joined after the break um, by Barack Hussein, who's going to be discussing with Zara in the special segment. So please stay tuned uh, and don't go anywhere.